So, hi, hi. Uh, and welcome to Lisbon. Is this Thank your you. first time here? No, not in Lisbon, but my first time at this conference. Run Sport. Yes. The new big thing in uh, racing sims. That's um, our hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you expect to fit in to the market to the, of, the, of the racing simulators? Sure. Yeah, Gran Turismo, Seto Course. Uh, how do you expect to fit in in the middle of those? Sure. So, uh, I mean, obviously our hope is to become the best of them. Um, but so, it's a very interesting space. I mean, sim racing is, you could argue, somewhat niche. Um, but it is also very competitive. There's a lot of great titles out there, whether it's, as you say, Assetto Corsa, Gran Turismo, iRacing, others. Um, so it's a very competitive space. But we believe there's both space and opportunity uh, to kind of grow and create more here. So um, one of the big things that we've noticed, for example, is the... Uh, is, so there's a, sorry, a couple thoughts here. So I guess yeah. the first one is one of the okay. one of the big barriers with sim racing is the gap between the real experience and the uh, and the the simulated experience, right? And that a lot of real drivers, for example, say this is a hard time thing they have a hard time with the sim racing. But every generation, as we get new technology, we get closer to that real experience, right? Whether it's increased fidelity in the visual graphics or increased fidelity in the force feedback. So this is one area where we think we can kind of take the the whole genre a step further, right? As every title does. The other space we see some opportunity is that, so racing used to be about 25% of the gaming industry uh, as a genre. Today it's, I think, 2%, okay? That doesn't mean that there's no opportunity in racing. So we're a firm believer that there's an opportunity to bring racing back to the mainstream for gamers as well. So not just really appealing to that hardcore sim group, but also bringing gamers just back to the space, because racing so, is exciting. And why do you think the, the racing games lost so much space in just a couple of years? So I think part of it is just, uh, let's say, diversity in experience. Experiences. So I think early on racing was one of these things that was pretty straightforward as a game to make and obviously it didn't feel like the real thing but in the early days it was sort of if you have the car you got. I, mean, I think we all remember when we were kids playing racing games, yeah. right? Um, of course. So there's an element of that. But I think there's also an element of at the moment I feel like the racing genre is a little bit behind the curve. I think if you look at the games industry, um, a lot of them have introduced a lot of new mechanics and a lot of ways and philosophies of approaching gaming and the business and the, the, the space around the game itself. And I think this is also an area where we could potentially innovate and sort of bring racing forward into the modern era. And uh, with esports booming and, uh, and blossoming in a lot of different genres, yeah. it is, it's kind of, how should I phrase it, it's kind of weird that sim racing isn't taking a part of that spotlight and a part of that space because sim racing is pretty straightforward. It's, racing with cars sure. well, how how will you make a difference and how will you try to get yourselves in the esports scenario sure as uh, a staple it's a very easy question <laughs> um, but no so obviously there's a few elements here so i think it is very straightforward to understand but you need to have people who are passionate and care about it and you need to have fans who are serviced properly so i think one opportunity we have is to really and what we have been doing with the r1 is to bring real modern esports experiences with like drama and hype and a lot of modern production values and giving the fans something to really get engaged with and and, and follow and become fans of um, part of it is also going to be growing the genre as well so there's a great analogy that you can make. In traditional sports, 1% of players, 1% are players and 99% are watchers. In esports, 1% are watchers and 99% are players, right? So we have an inverted pyramid. There's a lot of opportunity there. Um, so I think as we grow the sport, as we take time, as we grow the game, you're also going to see more people coming in to watch it and it's going to help push sim racing to the uh, top level. But I'll also argue, we were a title at EWC, the Esports World Cup. So we're already there with the big boys right now. True, true, true. Uh, and how how is the how are the fans reacting? Because uh, the I've got this feeling, and I'm, I think it's pretty pretty generalized that uh, sim racing fans are they have that game. They they like that specific game, and when some other game comes on the market, they usually trash it and, uh, and say, nah, nah, I'm good with the other one." How are you how are you managing the the reactions, the expectations of fans, and uh, and what can you say about rent sport that others don't have? Sure. So I think there, there's, let's say there's two types. There's, as you say, there's absolutely the hardcore loyalist and every other game besides their game is trash for every reason. And that's okay, right? <laughs> and, and, well, so for the, the other group is the, uh, is the people who are more open-minded, right? They love sim racing in general. They play cross titles. This group is really great because they're very excited about our product. They're willing to come and try Rensport. We've already seen people switch over to Rensport. We have some of our own loyalists now and we're still in open beta, right? We have a lot of work to do on the game still. It's a great experience, but there's a lot more we can do and will do. And uh, so we'll see that grow. For the hardcore fans, you know, it's okay. Um, 
all that means for me and for us is that it's a challenge to give them such a great experience that even though they have their title, they're willing to come and maybe give us another try and maybe get involved. You know, everyone is welcome with Red Sport. Your biggest tournament today was in the EWC. Yeah. Um, how will you create uh, now that players already know what uh, what R1 is and uh, and they know what to expect from from watching it? Uh, how will you now create a, a scene, a, a scenario, or a Sure. How will you build the, the sports scene, basically? So, I'm a big believer in the classic sporting pyramid, right? So uh, I think this is something that the esports industry in general has sometimes lost, where the people put a lot of focus on this big, spectacular, top-tier product, and that's all they think about. And you need that, and for us that is the R1. But for your average player, your average racer, Most of them are not going to play in the R1, right? And But they are going to want to compete. And they're also going to want to know, for the young guys who are really talented and want to get there, they want to know how to get there. So the next step for us is, besides continuing, of course, to improve on the R1 and iterate, is to start really building out that ecosystem. So at the grassroots level, we already have a community leagues program where we're working with different racing groups um, to give them the opportunity to have their own like kind of dedicated leagues that have a special highlight and get support directly in the game. So that's one step on the grassroots. And right now, the next step is to build that middle section of the pyramid. So we want to create, we want to bring, for example, Makers Cups. We already had the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland come to a Rennsport, right? We want to bring more of that, of these kind of exciting pro-am tournaments, right? We want to maybe build an R2 and R3. And so when we get to the end of this vision, what you have is not just the R1, but as a new player, you could come in there and you could say, okay, I can participate in the grassroots. Oh, I'm good. I can go and try and qualify for these middle tier tournaments. Oh, I'm good. Maybe I get picked up and go to the R1 as well. And so it's really building that full path to pro that I think is vital for just a healthy racing ecosystem and for a, a place that people want to come and spend their time and really respect the time they invest to get good at our game. It would be needed to, to have a, a full investment to play R1, like have a full simulator cockpit Uh, or do you think a player with a controller can uh, so, fend off against a, a cockpit owner? So I think if you have a full cockpit, you're probably always going to be a couple seconds faster than with a controller just by the nature of the inputs. But that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be space for controller players to play. In fact, what I've been hearing from some people is that we might already have in the sim racing space some of the be perhaps best in class controller support. So I'm a firm believer that you know if you expect everyone to be at that level where they already have a massive 10,000 euro cockpit to have fun and to compete, you're going to lose a lot of people and you're also going to fail to bring a lot of people into the joy that is racing, right? So for us, it's very important to have that amazing experience in the cockpit, but also to let people come in on a controller, to get started on a controller, and to maybe then think, you know what, I want that extra two tenths. Maybe I'll grab a Logitech yeah. uh, or whatever, one of these you know, smaller yeah. ones, and eventually upgrade to the big boy VRS rig. You know, that's, uh, yeah. So that's a strategy. Everyone can play and strong grassroots to create a, a pathway exactly. for players to exactly. reach R1. That's it. Thank awesome. you. Perfect. Thank you.